Hello, this is George Senda, the guy from Pittsburgh. And one of the things that drives me crazy is filling out forms. Filling out forms online, filling out forms at a doctor's office, filling out forms at the bank, filling out forms for my housing, filling out forms for credit, just filling out forms. And it's not the filling out forms that bothers me so much as the redundancy. When I go to different doctor's departments, allergy, ophthalmology, uh, now I've got to go to uh, ultrasound on, on Tuesday, pulmonary medicine, general medicine, ear, nose, and throat, and otolaryngology or something like that. Every department, if you're a new patient, you've got to fill out the same form. Your name, your address, your phone number, your email, what medical condition you have, what medication you have. Now, most of that is not going to change if you don't have diabetes, if you have allergies, if you have asthma, COPD, if you're a woman and you're pregnant or not pregnant, but it's all out on paper. So I go to different departments and I've always fill out, they always hand me the same damn form. And online it's even worse. You've got to fill out the form online. Someone says there's autofill. Well, I saw it on Google Chrome. I don't know if there's autofill in Firefox. But if someone's got a variation of that form, the standard form of whatever it is, it's not going to work. And a lot of times forms won't work on my iPad. And I, there was a contest online by a video producer. First of all, they said it takes three hours for that her to create the video announcing the prize that she's giving away. And I'm going, three hours? You put the music on. It's the same music. You put the little logo. You describe the prize of the day. Now, she's doing an Advent thing, 12 Days of Catmas. Very cute, kitty-related stuff. But other than the pictures of the Catmus, some of that should be on a template. You don't have to change anything but your voice and what you're describing. And then she gives a disclaimer, I'm not responsible if it gets out of the country. That may take a month. I'm not responsible once it gets in the hands of the post office. That's the same thing she says in every video. And so I asked the question, can you have it so that I don't keep filling out my name, address, email, what YouTube channel you're, I have. Now, I don't know what happens if you don't have a YouTube channel. If you put none, does it accept it? And then they want you to prove you're a human being by putting 2 plus 2 is 4. I haven't tried to see what happens if you have 5. And I got chewed out. You don't have to enter the contest. It takes me 3 hours. How hard is it to fill out a form? Well, I'm 65. Every time I fill out a form, I've wasted 1 or 2 or 3 minutes. And the rest of my lifetime, I could spend hours filling out forms. And there's a couple of amazing facts about forms. U.S. companies spend $120 billion a year on printed forms, most of which outdate themselves in three months. 40% of an employee's time is looking information locked in email and filing cabinets. Filing costs 20 bucks a month. Costs $1,500 a year to, put a for, to keep a floor to our filing cabinet. If you lose the form, it's $125 if it's misfiled, and three to $750 for a lost document. And most companies, they lose their forms, they go out of business because they gotta give them to the government, state, federal, local, county, city. Of course, some places, when they abandon the business, what do they do? They don't cart all those old forms. They leave them in the business. I've seen videos where newspapers leave all their records just sitting there on shelves. But isn't there a way in this day and age when they're trying to go paperless, which is never going to happen. My friend Paul worked for the VA for 20 years, and they were talking in 1970 about the paperless office. Shouldn't there be a way to keep it simple and just fill out one form? And fill it out once if you have a contest or you're going to the doctor or the bank. The bank's information doesn't change except maybe your income. I'd like a loan, Mr. Banker. I'd like a credit card, Mr. Banker. But your name, address, phone number, account information, none of that's going to change. 
and yet we're inundated. And I was amazed to find out one thing. The Canadians are the second biggest consumers of paper. Now, I guess everybody, all the women are sitting in Tim Hortons, waking out their journals like they do in Starbucks or on their computer typing away or reading their journals or reading somebody else's journals. And they're eating maple cookies and going out and get, getting maple syrup. And when they're done with that, they go home and club a moose to death so they can have something to eat on the fireplace for dinner. I don't know. Because that's all I think they got in Canada is maple, mooses, and beer. What are they filling all the forms for? They're, they got less people than we do. They don't go to war. I don't think Canada's gone to war since we fought them in 1812, except for World War One and World War Two, and maybe Korea. But they don't attack anybody usually. You ever heard Canada declaring war? So what do they need all this paperwork for up in Canada? And if they get rid of it, what do they do in the wintertime? Do they store it till it thaws out? Or do they just put it on the street with the snow cover? I don't, I don't get that one either. So, and we consume 700 pounds of paper per person per year. I got paper all over the place for things I got to fill out. I got new stuff in the mail every day. And then the other one gets me, I, I got my ATM card. And they gave me a stack of paperwork like this. This high. Legal disclosures for an ATM card. In a folder yet. And I'm going, can't they just simplify it? Keep it simple, stupid? Like when I used to program on my Apple II, you made the form or the, or the template simple. We have certain legal things we have to do by the federal or state government. Do you agree to all these things to have this account? Yes or no? That's, they should do one line. And that make you fill out all this damn paperwork. Because they already know all your information. And if they don't know it, they can get it. Unless, of course, it gets lost in the computer somewhere, which has happened to me in Wells Fargo. And with GEICO, we can't find you in the system. Well, you found me this morning. What happened to it? Are they pushing the wrong button or is it going to the wrong area? I don't know. So anyway, I won't be entering that contest anymore because I got jumped on for saying, can't you devise a way, if you do this next year, just to fill it out once? Nothing changed except the item being offered. And... I also don't get one other thing. Why is it that they have this CAPTCHA thing where you got to type capital J, small a, one, two, large K, three, five, small K, six. And then if you don't get it right, and they don't give you the hints of how it's supposed to go, is it upper or low case in some cases, you got to start all over again. And... The other one is, why do I have to put my email in on these forms twice? If I'm typing them correctly the first time, then what the hell is with the form that I can't accept the email I just typed in? I don't get that either. So, I, I don't know. It's one of my big pet peeves. And the other two are customer service people saying, we're sorry you're frustrated when you call them up because you're angry because they've screwed up. Or they've given you the wrong information. That happens a lot with Wells Fargo and Bank of America and, and uh, PG&E. Because they get people who don't know what they're doing. And then they say, oh, we're sorry that this happened to you. And it's insincere. You didn't personally do anything wrong. Stop saying you're sorry. And the other things I get was when some guy or women, it's not women so much, but they tell me, uh, well, sir, and they do it 20 times. I'm aware of I'm a man. Why well, keep saying sir constantly? And the, the other final annoyances are they never get my name right. They've misspelled my first name, Anthony, my middle name, George, my last name, Senda, my email address, the city I live in, and even my mailing address. On They can't spell the word court. I've had to misspell street. 
and God help them if they spell where I live on Ferry Street, they can't get the word ferry right. I don't know if they're thinking about the ferry to Sausalito or a ferry from uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's garden being photographed or another kind of ferry. I don't know, but they, they cannot spell. And so you have to repeat your name five, six, seven times. They still don't get it. And then the, there is one other item when they say, mail in a label and you don't have a printer hooked up or no way to print it. And then you say, so you send me a label and it stymies them. They don't want to do. Well, you could, I had Lexmark, I had Lexmark tell me, it took me six phone calls when I had a defective Lexmark printer to, uh, get me to send me a snail mail, get them to send me a snail mail um, label to return their printer. And they, I kept getting told, you can print out a label when the printer wouldn't print. And I finally got a person that understood the concept of um, oh God, it's Kathy. I finally got them to understand the concept of you print out a label, mail me the label in an envelope, and send me the mailing label so I can return your printer. So, that thing's only supposed to ring four times. That's why I went, oh God, it's Kathy. It's ringing six, seven, eight times. I don't get it. Finally shut it off. All right. This is George Sender, the guy from Pittsburgh. That's what's annoyed me for years filling out forms. Have a great evening. Stay warm and safe out there. And Jeremy, the jo Jeremy, no joy, the slacker, you slacked, and your team slacked. Now, if you've done the video with me, maybe your team would have won. All right, weird day today. Teams I thought would win would lost, and teams I thought would lose have won. So, week 14 is very odd. I haven't looked at my Steelers yet. Last thing, though, there was no score. Bye-bye for now.